Welcome back to Everything, where we play everything, and this is my father's long, long legs. Beautiful. Um, so this isn't really a game, I guess. It's text-based. So let's see. My family lived on the southern edge of a certain midwestern industrial city in an old house, old enough that, it's still, that its basement still had a dirt floor. I was not yet old enough to openly question a parent's behavior, but certainly old enough to recognize its oddness when my father began digging. Okay. I retain only a single clear memory of the time before the situation became alarming. My father forsook sunlight forever. Forsook is, like, he avoided it. Avoided the sunlight, right? I'm guessing. Okay. I'm sitting at the bottom of the wooden stairs that led to our basement. Ahead in the dimness stands my father, up to his waist in the hole. Still in his dark blue uniform from the factory, skin and fabric blackened by the hot breath of the machinery, and further smudged now by the damp earth. I watch father with the satisfaction of a child who sees in her parent a well of limitless capability. Alright. This is fucking weird so far. Michael Litz. No, parts of this game make use of sound effects. Please. Okay. So watch this with headphones. Um, upstairs, my mother called out the dinner is done. My father takes one last shovel of the earth, turns it over the side of the excavation, and, in a single incredible motion, crawls out of the hole simply by pressing the sole of his boot to the lip of the pit and moving his whole body upward, walking right past me, right up the stairs. Okay. Is that so oh, his long, long legs, huh? He was always a tall, angular man, as the remaining pictures of him suggest. And to this day, I can clearly conjure the marvelous image of my father's long, long legs, striding over me, as he emerged from the hole as he was, or he was to spend years digging beneath our house. Apart from him, there were three of us. My mother, my younger brother, and myself. Uh, let's do mother. There are many things about my mother I do not understand. She first found my found my fa what? She first found my father attractive. She admitted to me many years later because of how unusual he was. Okay, I put emphasis on the wrong parts there. Anyways, he had come to the midwestern industrial town and secured a job at the same factory where my mother was working. Though a practical man, he read constantly and voraciously in subjects ranging from engine repair to philosophy. A habit instilled in him, he claimed by his own parents. So he can't learn about the brother and myself anymore? I should have clicked myself, honestly. Alright. This was all my father ever said of his family beyond us. Any further inquiry into the subject caused him to leave the room, or bring up some other pre pressing issue. Mother once theorized that father had won run away from home. He'd won away from home! Whatever his reasons for leaving his family behind, my father did not wait too long before beginning a new one. I was born only a few months after my parents were married. Within a few years, father made enough money that my father could stay home and watch over me, and, not too long after, my brother. Then one night, when my brother was perhaps, sorry, are we learning about the brother now? Was perhaps only a year old. My father came home, pulled a brand new shovel from the back of his pickup truck, and descended into the basement, where he began to dig. At first, he told mother that he was preparing to put down a cement floor, suggesting a prelude to a full or partial renovation of the house. As a child, the movements of adults were still largely mysterious to me. I do not know the specific circumstances under which mothers, under which mothers realize what realize this most motive was untrue. That doesn't make any sense. Nor do I know exactly what transpired when father told mother that they must go to the basement to discuss the matter closer to its source. For after the door shut behind them, my brother and I were left alone in the house. Oh shit! My brother cried most of the night while I lay in my own bed, pillows pressed to my ears. The next day, my mother reappeared quietly prepared our meals and then locked herself in a bedroom shortly before father returned home and commenced digging once again oh does this get anywhere i'm tired of talking now <laughs> uh, i've been recording four minutes now. cool my father for his part stopped sleeping in his bedroom with her instead taking to the basement a decision which coincided with the first signs of his terrible metamorphosis okay the changes were slow but nor noticeable <clears throat> sorry Father began to grow paler, and by the time the factory closed and he could spend his whole day, spend the whole day in the basement, he was as white as chalk. Perhaps it was this general evidence of wear, this change in skin tone, and his subsequent emaciation that made him look taller. <laughs> what the fuck is this? As if his height increased in proportion to the depth of his project in the basement. <sighs> so much without a comma or anything. I mean, I guess it works, but whatever. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, my brother put in fucking learn how to read. 
Meanwhile, my mother put my brother into preschool and sent me to a latchkey program. What does that mean, latchkey kids? While she worked to support us. And what seemed a deliberate contrast to my father, she grew somehow darker and smaller. That's creepy. My father dug uninterrupted in the basement for at least a decade, and once I started being high, he did not even leave the basement to join us for dinner. Just kidding, said high school. Then my mother left him. Awesome. Father was sufficiently enveloped in his life's tasks that, were th that there was no need to replay the arguments from my childhood. Whatever desire he once had to keep us home with him had apparently fallen away, lost in the depths of that pit. On her own, mother seemed to physically decompress, become less bowed. What does that mean? She spoke more, laughed more, she had friends and lovers. Oh, okay, I know what that means. We did not see my father at all after we left. <laughs> sorry. It's gross, I'm sick, I'm sorry. It's cold. <laughs> On the day we left for good, he did not even come out of the basement. Though by that point, it was questionably, it was questionable how easily he could get through the doorway. So tall he had grown. So he's getting bigger? All right. It was not until many years later that my brother suggested we pay a return visit to our father's house. Needless to say, my brother and I had different experiences of our early home life. I'm going to say I. A year or so before we left my father was the last time I ventured down into the basement. Uh, my brother was out with his friends. Why did it get brighter? Okay. My brother was out with his friends, having reached the age when he finally realized the awkwardness that resulted from bringing visitors to our home. And mother had locked the door to her room and apparently gone to bed. Father was, of course, laboring in his basement. Giving labor. In labor, is what I meant to say. I ruined the joke. And I was doing homework in the living room while watching television. There came a knock at the door. A man on the porch was squat, but dressed neatly in a suit, coat, and hat. A pair of very small pet... Very small spectacles was perched on the end of his nose, looking minuscule in comparison to his large round face. Hello, young lady, he said to me in a labor voice. Is your father home? Who are you? I asked. The man tipped his old-fashioned hat back on his head, smiled with his rubbery lips, and said, You would have no reason to know me, of course, he said, but I'm your uncle. I left the man on the porch, the door locked, while I went to seek my mother's help. Thus I discovered she was unresponsive, as she often was in those days. I know that feel. This left me with only the option to summon my father from the basement. He did not respond when I opened the door and yelled down, though I thought I could hear faintly the sound of his digging. I looked back to the front door where I could see through pebbled glass the rotund figure of the man who claimed to be my uncle, and descended the wooden stairs into the basement. Ah, <sighs> so much. The only light, as always, came from a single bulb hanging from the ceiling. My father had learned to operate in these conditions, but for me... The lack of illumination cast the labyrinth below into a mess of confusing and seemingly contradictory paths of damp black, black earth and only slightly blacker shadow. Father had attempted to dig straight down, but as the years went on, he, set, he elaborated his original plans, angling outward from the center of the base, basement. God, it's getting worse and worse for me to read. At a depth of perhaps 15 feet. That's pretty deep for not that long of a time. From there, he had begun to hollow out the entirety of the basement with one long looping path, threaded and bent around itself like some monstrous length of viscera. Is that how you say it, viscera? All the while continuing his march downward. I stood on the bottommost stair that, as I thought of it, still properly belonged to her house. By my feet was a stack of unfamiliar books. They were old, with blank but warped brown covers. Next to them was what appeared. Next to them was what appeared to be an antique child's rattle, caked with dirt and several rocks chipped into various unnatural but vaguely instrumental shapes. This is too many, like, huge words. This is, like, the type of person that is like, oh, I'm super smart and no big words, and then they write a book, and they use only the biggest words they can think of. I turned to the void and called for my father. Turned to the void and called for my father. That's a good fucking life quote right there. <laughs> no response came, but I grew more certain that than I could hear, however distantly, the sound of father's shovel. I called for him again, this time giving also my purpose for interrupting his work. There's a man at the door, he, I said. He said he's my uncle. I stood and waited, and as I did so, the sound of digging stopped. My father emerged a minute or so later, un unfolding himself from the narrow bends of his maze, his pale skin covered only by the rags of his clothing, clothing and everywhere dusted gray with soil including, I noted, the corners of his mouth, which seemed stained particularly thoroughly, and much more darkly. Your uncle, Father rumbled, not quite asking a question. He then added, my brother. I nodded. Show him in, he ordered. 
Squat stranger, my uncle, who I remember smelled of sour milk, seemed elated as pro- at his prospects. I led him down the basement stairs, his agitation growing exponentially until he saw my father, father standing at his full height. <laughs> Jeez, it must have been at least eight or nine feet then, I think, at the entrance of his renovations. Ah, <sighs> so much. I knew to take my leave. What? I knew to take my leave, and as I ascended the stairs, I heard the visitor remark that my father seemed to have done very well for himself all things considered. I never again saw the man who claimed to be my uncle, either that day or any day after. Perhaps not coincidentally, this is also my last clear clear memory of my father, and the one that returned to me many, many years later, and my brother suggested we return to our father's house. My brother had always been a bit more sentimental regarding the matter. My brother was young enough when my father began digging that it seemed to him an indifferent fact of life. Oh, so now we're going to the brother's flashback. Oh boy. Sorry. It seemed obvious to me that something was wrong with our home. Its wrongness was screamed, I thought, by the the chilly terseness, God, with which our mother moved through it, returning home from work in the late afternoon, serving meals, and retiring to her bedroom. (laughs) Sorry. God, my nose is itchy. It's gross. I hope I cut that out, but I probably won't, because I'm stupid like that. The wrongness was screamed, of course, by my father, who, after losing his job at the factory, spent nearly all day in his basement, emerging at irregular intervals to eat and use the toilet. This is to say nothing of the physical changes he underwent as time went on. Oh, Lord, when does this end? I thought it was going to be something, but it's not. The wrongness was screamed, of course, by my father, who, have, who after losing his job at the factory, spent nearly all day in the basement, emerging at regular intervals to eat and use the toilet. This is to say nothing of the physical changes he underwent as time went on. I already clicked that, sorry. Uh, the wrongness was screamed by my own actions. The heavy worry I felt at any moment. Wait, what? The heavy heavy worry I felt that at any moment the fragile equilibrium of our house would be upset and my brother's friends would witness the terrifying truth of our family situation. A situation I myself could not begin to articulate, but which I felt ashamedly that an outsider would. This is weirdly worded. Of course, my brother, young as he was, saw nothing wrong with inviting fr- his friends to our home, and even taking them down to the basement to see what he called, after our father's example, I believe, the renovations. The friends never asked to return to the basement after my brother took down took them down there. Some of them quietly designed, quietly deigned, okay, to never return to our house at all. Much to my relief. <laughs> this is so weird. Much to my relief, though my brother was often disappointed. Okay. I don't like... Just... Whatever. I'm not gonna keep complaining. That's not good to do. I recall only one instance when my brother was perhaps seven, when one of his playmates made a scene. Oh, shit. I believe my brother's friend came from a religious family, which may have been part of the problem, but that also may be something I recognize only due to my own biases. At any rate, though his cosmology was different from my own, he at least shared some of my anxieties when he attempted to explain to my brother that our father's project in the basement was deeply unnatural. I emerged from the living room because down the hall I could hear crying. I knew that my brother had a friend over, and so was prepared for the worst. The two boys stood outside the door to the basement, which was still which still stood open. My brother looked up as I approached, as that was a good whistle, did you hear that? At a loss as to how to comfort his weeping companion. You're going to hell. Our visitor informed me after I managed to get him to look at me. That's where he's digging to, digging to down there. All right, the child said, looking from me to my brother. He's digging to hell, and you're all going with him. This is the best friend saying that. Jeez. My brother did not invite as many classmates over after that day. I don't believe he ever invited any of them down to see the renovations ever again. Are we really going to hell? He asked me one night, laying beside me in bed after a nightmare sent him to my room. I told him I did not know. But is that where the, is that where Dad is digging to? He asked. I told him why. I, God, I can't read this. I told him there was no such place. Then why is Dad digging? In the early days, when I sat on the stairs and watched him work, my father had given me dozens of flippant reasons for his project: seeking dinosaur bones. Am I supposed to click that or this? Oh wait, all of these excuses had lost currency by this point. Of course, when. When uh, and when asked what he was doing, as my brother told me, his religious visitor had inquired. My father had other things to say. How did that one? This is not the real world, my father would say, or something along these lines. What the fuck? 
What we think is the real world is just a layer of dirt caked around the true core of the universe. And what is dirt? Inert matter? Dead weight? The remains of those who came and went before us? Content only to further press down upon creation with their waste? There was a time when human beings were giants walking upon a small earth, but now the earth has grown fat and hateful with our soil, while we have grown small. Okay, starting here, I am scraping away over the sediment, our coagulated filth, and returning us to our original glory. <laughs> this is weird. Like, it's getting interesting, finally. Oh boy. I as assemble this manifesto from memory, from various uh, iterations and variations Father offered us over the years. And certainly it was sor this sort of heresy that had often offended my brother's erstwhile friend. Right? What the fuck is an erstwhile? Still, there were not satisfactory answers to this then, and would not be satisfactory for my brother as he huddled fearing hell in my bed. <laughs> Alright, I fear hell too. Just kidding, I fear heaven. That'd be scary shit. But frankly, I had no other answer for him, and let the matter lapse into silence. Which is perhaps why, all those years later, he urged me to come back with him. Come with him back to our father's house. I see my brother wanted to put his mind at ease by checking up on our father, who had been left alone now for slightly longer than we had lived with him. On the other hand, I appreciated my brother's sentiment, even if I felt like it was misplaced. On the other hand... Oh, on the other hand, I thought I already heard that. Whatever. On the other hand, I knew I could not stop him. His feelings toward father had always been more lenient. The only question was, would I go along with him? Let him make his visit on his own. Hmm. Let's go, I guess. We decided upon a day to visit our childhood home, where we assumed our father would still live, and decided to meet there one afternoon the following week. But there must have been some... There must have somewhere been a miscommunication. Okay. I was late. I must have been late. The alternative is that, for his own purpose, my brother arrived early to see our father before I did. And I do not wish to contemplate why that would be. The town was considerably less industrial than it had been, though the taste of indus industry... <laughs> the taste of industry still laced our water and air. The old neighborhood, not the most affluent, even in former times, had fallen into further disrepair. The houses up and down the block stood weathered, and it seemed empty. The sidewalks buckled around thick protrusions of sickly weeds, which reached out into the pothole street, protruding fingers of the overgrown lawns. The only sign of habitation was a single car, my brother's car, parked outside our old home. The doors were locked, the windows rolled up, a hand pressed to the hood told me it was not warm, told me it was not warm, but apart from that, I had no way of guessing how long the vehicle had been there unattended. Ahead, the house waited. It seemed not much different from the rest of the buildings, scraped down to gray bones by the elements. The windows were gone, even without slivers of gra glass remaining, and the porch had bowed and now even held a stagnant pool of rainwater. The front door stood open at an angle, its lowermost hinge having rusted and snapped in two. Okay... Stepping carefully on the rotten porch, I slipped inside and found myself in the old living room. I'm imagining this house as the house from It. Like, that scary looking place. With the well in one part. Like, that would be the fucking hole, huh? The giant well that led down to where Pennywise is. Anyways, uh, the floor was littered with trash and chunks of plaster dropped from the ceiling. The television was gone, though a lighter patch and the shredded wallpaper marked its former location. The couch had collapsed and now seemed covered with mounds of some sort of gray mold or fungus. That's gross. Ahead was the hallway, was the central hallway of the house, and I could see that the door to the basement had been wholly removed. I called out my brother's name and then stood for a moment, looking down into the unremitting darkness. Of course, the power was out. It was probably disconnected long ago, but a flashlight lay on the floor just outside the basement entrance. My brother's? The flashlight seemed quite new. I flicked it on and pointed it down into the basement, but it penetrated far enough only to reveal the foot of the stairs. I called my brother's name again and waited, but there was still no response. Oh shit. Assuming the basement was anything like anything like as I had last seen it, okay. My brother could have easily gotten hurt if he had <laughs> I can't read this if he went down without his flashlight. He might have been laying down there just beyond the stairs, unconscious. I had to make sure. Flashlight ready, I went into the basement. Oh, shit. I don't like that. The stairs creep beneath my feet. I reached the bottom, and when my flashlight returned, only a slope heading deeper beneath the house. I knew my father had done quite a bit of work in the decades since we left. 
I went down. I called for my brother. I walked to the left. I walked to the right. Ooh, what should we do? Oh, why does it pause right there? That's weird. Does it pause over here? Kind of. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I guess I would call for the brother. Only my own breathing echoed through the chambers of barren earth. I walked further into the darkness. Just, just walk further. Called for my brother again. I turned right. The musty smell of old earth filled my nostrils. Let's do that one, I guess. Around me there was nothing but darkness. There's noise. I walked for... What? Uh, uh, let's follow the sound of digging. In the distance, the sound of shoveling did not break its rhythm, as if the digger did not know or care that I was there. I followed the sound of digging. I walked further in... The digger. Where was my brother? I followed the sound of digging. Let's do that. Uh, followed the sound of digging. Uh, walked into the darkness. Let's turn right. So going in circles? How could I tell? I followed the sound of digging. Took a slow, downward sloping path. Uh, the paths my father had eaten through the earth stretched out in all directions. No sign of my brother. Mm -hmm -hmm. Turned right. Going in circles. Went left. Oh. Ooh. That's creepy. Hello, father. How are you doing? You look well. Am I supposed to do something? I'm afraid to click or anything. Like, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna click. Okay, it didn't do anything. Uh, shit. Father, are you okay? You just hanging out? Oh, <laughs> I did not find my brother. But you found your father. I do not know what to tell our mother. I do not know where to go from here or what to do. It was true that I gave up my search, but once I saw what lived there, I had been living there for all these years, or more precisely what had grown there, I ran from the basement. Somehow, by my own luck or by some other's design, I made it out of the darkness, though my brother is not. There is a chance, I think, that he may still be alive. What if that was the brother, homing, and he, like, is digging now? Ooh, twist. My guilt is heavy, do not doubt that. But it is outweigh outweighted, okay, by the fear th I experienced when I came face to face with the terrible result of father's attempted renovations of a rotted world. I once told my brother there is no such place as hell. Oh, I'm afraid to click this. I still believe that to be true, but wherever my little brother is now. Oh no. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Those are some long legs. I wonder if he's grown as tall as our father. My father's long, long legs. I don't want to click that. Oh. That's it. Okay. Junji Ito. Oh, it's inspiration. Okay. I thought there was a jump scare or something. So, okay. I'm going to go look that up now. Because <laughs> that's annoying. Okay. So, I don't think that there are, like, that there is anything, basically. Yeah, I think that's it. Alright, well, I guess if that's all there is to it, then thanks for watching. Um, if you like this, let me know. If there's a game you want to see me play, leave it in the comments. If you want to see the video that you recommend, then, like, I'm going to do it because I do everything. So make sure and subscribe. And yeah, later boys.